everyone and welcome back to Other Law Students. If you're new here, my name's Elle and I've just finished my law degree at the University of Oxford. I got my results the other day and I got a first! Oh my god! Um, I still can't get over that, <laughs> I can't believe it. When I got my results through, I then had quite a few people messaging me asking how I took notes throughout my degree and I thought well I'll just make a video about it. Quick like note at the beginning, two things. First of all, this is just what works for me. Everybody takes notes differently. It, everybody will find different methods that work for them. This just worked for me. And I think it could work for a lot of other people as well, but you really just have to experiment on your own and find that out. Second of all, I did want to make this video earlier and I have made some videos similar-ish in the past. Um, if I'm being completely honest, the reason I didn't do this video sooner was because I had a lot of self-doubt and I was a bit worried, you know, God, what if I make a video about revising or about taking notes or anything and then I get my results back and I've failed my degree, um, then I've just put this kind of crap advice out into the world. But here we are. I didn't fail. I got first. So these are my tips. So I've broken this video up into three sections. The first one we're going to be looking at is for your tutorial. So basically the first time you've approached this material, how do you read it? How do you take notes, etc. The second part is going to be about after you finish that full module in your vacation, so your holiday period before the next term, um, you might have collections, which are like mock exams if you're at Oxford. That's That's what we'll be covering in the second part and how you can consolidate those notes. Then finally, in the third part, we're going to be looking at what you should be doing with those notes before your exam. So this is in your like final revision stretch. What are you going to do with those notes? I'll leave timestamps down below because, you know, maybe you're a new student and so it's just kind of the first bit that's going to be useful. Or maybe you're kind of coming into your final year and you're wanting to know how do I take all of my notes from the past three years? and condense them into something that's relatively manageable for your tutorial. So this is the very first time that you've ever come across this particular topic. Um, you might have had a lecture on it. Good chance you haven't had a lecture on it. Um, you get your reading list. What do you do? For me, I would say the best place to start is with your textbook. Now, when you're taking your textbook for the first time, I personally wouldn't make super detailed notes. This is definitely a mistake that I made pretty consistently throughout my degree. <laughs> um, it's so tempting, you know, when you have 100 pages of a textbook to dedicate one or even two days to reading that. But that's really, I just don't think that's the best way to go about it. Instead, what I would do is I'd take your textbook, go through, just kind of get the very, very basics. Really what you want your textbook to do is identify the key arguments, like the key points, key cases, and just really the things that you need to be looking out for in these cases. So now you've got all of that information from your textbook, what you want to go and do is look at your reading list and identify the key cases within that reading list. Um, sometimes your tutor will be really nice and do it for you and put little stars next to them, but otherwise it's up to you to do that. And because you have so many cases, it's really important to identify those key cases because some of these cases you'll have to skim read or you'll have to just read a summary and you don't want to be doing that with your really important cases. So now you've identified your key cases, what you want to do is you want to go through, and these are the cases that you really should be reading in full or kind of pretty close to full if you've not got that much time. So go through, I would probably start with the head note to get an idea of the facts more than anything else. So kind of go through your head note, look at the facts, um, see if they make sense. If they don't really make sense and you think you need more information, then go to the judgment itself to get those facts out. Um, but really the key thing that you want to be focusing on in your cases is the reasoning of the judgment itself. As you're taking notes from these judgments, I wouldn't worry about being super concise or anything. I would copy and paste bits across, um, making sure you're putting it in quotation marks so that you don't accidentally plagiarise something in an essay. Um, but yeah, I would basically write a subheading for each judge and then just sort of put in the key bits from their judgment. And this might mean that you have a case that you've got kind of a page or even two pages of notes on. That's fine. As you'll see later down the line, we're going to cut that down a lot. I do understand, though, that sometimes it's just not possible to read a full case. And especially in private law, um, I'm especially thinking of contract law here. Sometimes your cases are sort of 200, 
plus pages long so if you read them in full it would probably be a bit of a waste of time because some of the stuff that they're going through will not be particularly important i um, definitely had this in international law a lot of international law cases will include huge amounts which just aren't relevant for what you're looking at at that particular moment in time and so you don't want to wade through it all because you'll inevitably miss important things if that's becoming a bit of a problem and you don't know where to start there are two things that i would really recommend doing first of all um cases and materials books are really really great and um, this one is my um one for public international law but i tried to get hold of one of these for basically each subject um so i have one for contract i had one for land one for eu law this is my one for tort law um text and materials these are just really useful for basically picking out what the key points are and also will probably provide you with some um, references that you can then go and check in the case itself and that kind of thing. And that's just really useful because then you're going in with an idea. Also make sure, you know, go back to your textbook because at the beginning the textbook is quite useful for just kind of picking out those key details. Um, that doesn't mean that you shouldn't then be using those textbooks so do go back and use your textbooks find out what the key bits are um, because then that will just help guide you in the case and in making your notes another top tip is to find a case commentary quite often case commentaries will only be like five pages long sometimes they'll be a lot longer but often you can get some fantastic case commentaries that will really help you to just understand the reasoning of the judges. I think a good example of this is Professor Swadling's case commentary, I think on Stack and Dowden, which is a land law case. Um, and for me, that really, really helped me to understand the case itself. And that was so short. Um, so those kind of things are definitely, are definitely worth looking out for. So now that you've got all of that stuff for your case, um, just to make it easier for you, make sure that you separate that out into your facts, the issue and what was held. And then I would just underneath that pop all of your details about the judgment and that kind of thing. Next on to articles. The best way I found to approach articles was to read the introduction and then read the conclusion um, before reading the body of the text, because I find that it's really useful to go into reading something, kind of having an idea of what the author is getting at, because otherwise you get to the end of a 60 page article and think, I don't know what I'm looking for here. And sometimes authors go on a bit of a tangent. And so it's quite useful to read the introduction and read the conclusion so that you've got a vague idea of what you can skim read and what you need to be reading in, in more detail. If the introduction and conclusion aren't that useful for identifying those key arguments, again, using something like these texts and materials books, that can be really useful. Uh, for example, I've just opened this tort law book onto a random page um, and here there's a little extract from an article. So that's quite useful because that will help to kind of, again, guide you as to what the author's opinion is and then you can read the article itself with that in mind. I tend to adopt a bit of a two-step process when I'm reading articles just because I find it very difficult to focus sometimes um, and sometimes they end up taking way too many notes and they don't make any sense. Um, so basically the first time I will read it um, and I will kind of read it pretty carefully and highlight and then at the end of each page, I'll summarise in my own words. Um, I bought myself an iPad to do this because I did try doing it just on my laptop or printing stuff out, but I ended up wasting so much paper and I didn't want to do that. Um, and I just found using my iPad was really nice, but it's definitely not essential. Um, I just thought I'd treat myself a little bit because I had some leftover money from my student loan. So that's what I decided to do. And I found it really useful with the Apple Pencil and everything. Um, but again, definitely not necessary. That was just a bit of a splurge for myself. <laughs> Once I've gone through and highlighted the key bits and like summarised it myself, I then just basically type up what I've summarised um, and I find that really helpful and it means I don't have loads and loads of notes but it also means I kind of understand it. And then finally just before your tutorial or class or anything um, first of all just check and see whether your tutor is okay with you taking a laptop into that tutorial or class. Most of them in my experience are but some of them prefer that you don't. Um, if they would rather that you don't, I would just print out your work and then either use little sticky tabs or post-it notes or highlighters just to go through so that you can navigate quite easily through those notes that you've made because 
using this technique they're going to be pretty long because you've not cut out anything really okay, so moving on to part two so by this stage you've either completed all of the module or maybe half of the module you've got to the holidays or a reading week or whatever um, and now what you want to do is you want to consolidate those notes and condense them at this point you want to be cutting down I would say massively on your notes so your judgments need to be condensed and this will be much easier because you'll have had your tutorials you'll have had your classes you'll have an understanding of the module as a whole and so it'll be much easier to just get rid of stuff that at the time you thought maybe was possibly relevant but now it turns out it just isn't i would keep that same structure for your cases um with your facts, your issue, what was held, and then maybe if the judgment is particularly important, you want to add a few quotes underneath. Um, but in general, say it's probably fine. I think the main thing that you want to keep an eye out for is if there were kind of different lines of argument um, that we used to reach the same conclusion. So for example, conflicting judgments that still reach the same conclusion in the majority. If you're still struggling, to figure out exactly what's relevant again just go back to your textbooks go back to your cases and materials books and if you're really really stuck just send your tutor an email and just say i think i'm struggling to understand exactly what the really essential takeaway bit of this case is oh and hopefully they'll be able to send you some case commentaries or just explain it to you or something like that and then with your articles um usually during term time i write quite a lot of notes about articles in the VAC, the best thing for me to do is to go back and just write a paragraph, basically, um, summarising the author's view um, and, yeah, just putting it in my own words. I find bullet points aren't that helpful. I don't know why. It just helps me to see it in full sentences. So that's what I tend to do. I just tend to go back, write it in a solid paragraph um, and, and summarise. At this point as well, if you've had any gaps during term time, go back and fill those now or just if there are any cases that you read really quickly or didn't realise were really important, just go back and read them again using that same structure that you did sort of before your tutorial. Finally, you're on stage three, you've had your tutorial notes, you've had your sort of condensed notes if you will and now you're on to your very final like final form, judged up, fantastic, exam ready notes. First thing, super important, you need to make sure you know which topics you're revising. Um, I'll go through this in a later video, but obviously you don't want to be spending lots of time and effort going through notes if you're then not actually going to use those notes. So make sure you've decided on that before you kind of start this process. Um, you might have had collections and that kind of thing at this point, so make sure you go through any feedback either from those collections or previous essays just because like if you've made any mistakes in your understanding of cases you'll have that feedback now so you can make sure that everything is correct and um, also as you're going through past papers you'll see certain topics come up time and time again you'll see certain bits of exam feedback at like examiners feedback coming up time and time again just make sure you make a note of that and kind of adjust your notes accordingly sometimes you might want to add a little bit more or a little bit less detail sometimes if there's a particularly complicated concept um you want to kind of just pop that in your own words i did this just in red or a different color just so that it really stood out to me for example there were some bits in trusts law and land law which i could understand but needed reminding of and so i would just kind of write that out for myself to quickly flick through however i think overall the most important thing at this stage is your opinion make sure that if you've kind of done a summary of an article or there's contentious case or something like that just write your opinion down because that's the thing that's going to get you kind of pushed into the high two one first level marks do you agree with that author do you disagree like why do you think a case should have been decided a different way? Um, all of these kind of things. And think of other examples as well. So link cases together, link authors with evidence that their argument is right or wrong, you know. These are the kind of things that I would do in that very final stage of note taking. In hindsight, I would do this kind of final tip all the way from stage one to now but I didn't start doing it really until kind of stage three so um anyway make sure you're making the most of the heading feature on word it just makes everything so much easier to navigate it just means you can have a contents page at the beginning of your work and that makes everything a lot easier to navigate and 
I think it's a good idea. I hope that this was useful. Um, if you have any more questions, leave me a comment down below or just send me a message on Instagram or Twitter or something like that. I hope you all have a lovely day and I will see you really soon. Bye bye. <laughs>